We pulling? What's up? It's Jim Fro, and this is our official updated guide for Sarkareth. Big thank you to our supporters on Patreon. Your support means the world to us, and it's what makes these videos possible. Before the fight, split your raid into three groups for the debuff removal in Phase 1, and assign two to three players to collect bombs in Phase 2 and 3, and save Bloodlust for Phase 3. Alright, you start off by pulling the boss slightly off-center to the right side and have range loosely stacked around the outer edge to bait the fire swirlies, slowly rotating around the inner circle as they spawn. After two swirlies, the raid should try and get closer together because the boss soon channels Glittering Surge, which does a ton of raid-wide damage and needs a healing CD or two to survive. The raid should still be near the center of the room, which helps everyone avoid getting pushed off the platform by a pressing Howl, which pushes the raid away and puts a super important debuff on everyone. What's special about this debuff is that it lasts the entire phase and kills anyone who still has the debuff by the time the boss casts the second Glittering Surge. There's only two ways to get rid of the debuff. The first is by getting hit by one of the three disintegrate beams, and the second is getting hit by one of the boss's fire breath frontals. This is why you split your raid into three groups, one for each fire breath, to spread out the raid-wide damage that happens when the debuff gets removed. This can still be super deadly, so healers need to be ready for this. So, as the first fire breath happens, the first assigned group stands in the fire breath for one tick and then steps out. This will also put a dot on anyone hit by the fire breath, so make sure to have a priest mass to spell it to get rid of it. Then, everything repeats. Range bait the firebombs behind the boss, move when they spawn, the assigned group stands in the second and third breaths to remove the debuff, and everyone dodges the beams. If someone missed their breath for some reason, they can just stand in one of the beams to get rid of their debuff that way. For the tanks, taunt swap every time the boss casts Burning Claws, which does a big physical hit and applies a magical dot. The dot does raid-wide damage when it expires based on how much damage you've taken from the dot, so use some magical defenses to help with this. The second big glittering surge happens about 1 minute and 40 seconds in, so use some big raid cooldowns for this one as well. Then the boss teleports away and starts phase 2. At the start of phase 2, the boss will channel 10 stacks of the Oblivion debuff onto everyone in the raid, which sends everyone down to the Void Realm. In the Void Realm, you'll see three big circles and a bunch of smaller flares. While you're down there, you'll want to run around collecting the flares, which will give you a haste buff stacking up to 10 times. You'll also want to make sure that you run into two of the three big circles, saving the third for later. The tank will run through their third circle before everyone else, sending them back up to the normal realm to get into position to interrupt the boss. Once this debuff gets to about three seconds left, the tank interrupts the boss and everyone else steps into their third circle to go back up to the normal realm. Pretty quickly after that, the boss will cast a flying breath that does damage and spawns adds that need to be blown up. They die pretty quickly, but make sure to stun and interrupt any of their healing casts. Then, a couple of void bombs will spawn on the ground near random players. Have two or three of the pre-assigned players run onto each one, picking them up, and then standing in the big purple circles on the ground to get 10 stacks of the Oblivion debuff, sending them to the other realm. This will prevent the bombs from exploding, one-shotting the raid. While they're down there, they can run around collecting the flares and running through two of their three circles until the bomb debuff expires. When it expires, they run through their final circle to get sent back up to the fight. On Heroic, there's also a dispellable debuff, Infinite Duress, that goes out on a random player. When you dispel this debuff, it knocks everyone away from the debuffed player, so have the debuffed player move out to the edge of the platform while everyone else moves to ensure they won't get knocked off the platform. The tanks have a similar taunt swap as in Phase 1, but now the cast is called Void Claws and they need to move away from the raid as their debuff is expiring because it explodes on anyone in a circle around them. Since the Oblivion Dot does do damage, if anyone gets above 5 stacks, just have them use the circles themselves to go down and come back up quickly, removing the debuff and ultimately helping the healers. The boss will then cast another Flying Breath and you'll repeat the same mechanics until Phase 3. And at the start of Phase 3, there are some pretty strict movement requirements. Sarkareth will jump to a specific spot, and when he's active, the tanks need to quickly taunt and move the boss as far as they can to the opposite side of where the boss started to make sure the raid has enough room when the boss casts the big purple circle. When the circle is cast, the raid needs to immediately stack where Sarkareth started. Lock gates are pretty useful here. This baits the meteor spawns to right where the winds come from later on. After the purple circle explodes, on Heroic, a random player will have the knockback debuff, so that player needs to stay at the edge while everyone else immediately moves to the middle of the platform to not get knocked off. Make sure to CC, interrupt, and kill the adds that spawn. The boss will also cast Embrace of Nothingness, which is a giant soak that goes out on a random player that needs to be soaked by the raid. If things get super hairy, you can immune it if possible, or just straight up sacrifice the player by having them jump off the edge to avoid the damage. When the boss casts the winds, Scouring Eternity, everyone needs to move onto the white safety beams on the floor. This is the reason why we baited the meteors earlier. You still have the bombs that need to be dealt with, just like in Phase 2, as well as the dispellable knockback on Heroic. 
and if you get targeted with the blue arrow from Hurtling Barrage, try and point it away from the raid. The tanks have the same taunt swap, but this time when it expires, it explodes on the raid, so the tanks need to get 10 stacks of the Oblivion debuff to go down into the void to avoid the damage from the explosion. The fastest way to get 10 stacks is from the swirlies that spawn around the room. You'll bloodlust in this phase because the boss's damage is increased after every purple circle, so the faster you get this phase done, the better. And that's pretty much it. Here's a quick recap of the fight for you to review or screenshot for later. Our Patreon supporters get these guides early, so if you're interested in that, check out the links below. Peace.